Hi there, my name is David Spreadborough and I'm the international trainer here at Amp Software. This is part one of a two part screencast where I'm going to be looking at the filter categories in the current version of Amp 5. Before I start, it's important to highlight that I'm using version 7620. For current users, you can check your version number by going to help and then about. At AMP, we have a very active update path, so you may find that you have a slightly different list depending on your version number. Higher numbers will likely have more filters, as these are being added all the time. OK, over to the filter windows that hold the building blocks for your chains. The filter categories are down the left side. Only the filters relating to the highlighted category will be seen down the right. The categories are pretty self-explanatory. As an example, Load gives you the ability to load images and video manually into 5. Edit gives you the ability to apply geometric transformations, whereas Deblurring gives you access to the, well, yes, you guessed it, the Deblur filters. It's worth mentioning as a reminder that each filter has a different set of user configurable parameters in order to fine tune the filter settings. We'll look more at those when we look deeper at a couple of the filters. Under the load category, the first three are usually utilized automatically through drag and drop. If I dragged an image into my viewer window, the image loader would be used and then placed into my filter chain. For video, the video loader. If I dragged a folder of images into the viewer window, then the sequence loader would be used automatically. The two milestone loaders firstly enable immediate access to the milestone VMS server after inputting the necessary IP details. Then we have access to the exported archives. Both allow for native decoding of the proprietary date and time information that's held in the milestone format. The image paster uses the input from your system's clipboard, so you can paste any copied image directly into a new chain. The video input gives you access to your system's direct show video capture devices. If using a capture board that works through direct show, this loader allows you to capture directly into 5. There is currently one filter under the link category, the video mixer. This enables two images from any part of any chain to be mixed together in a variety of ways. They could be side by side or overlaid. The right category has three filters, image, sequence and video. As filters, it means that when a new file or files are written, the details and the parameters used are automatically entered into your evidential chain for full transparency on the output, the processing and the creation of the new file. Select Frames gives you a multitude of options to deal with your videos and sequences. Selecting a single frame or selecting a range of frames between two specific times are probably the most commonly used. The sparse selector gives you the ability to only choose the desired frames based on your own requirements. Removing duplicates has a parameter in the filter settings that enables you to set the change threshold. This can then automatically remove all duplicated frames, often occurring as a result of poor transcoding. Selecting only the iframes from an MPEG based video can be a very quick way to isolate only the images that have been completely refreshed and as a result do not suffer from prediction errors or artifacts. The auto selector only retains similar images. This also has a threshold parameter to adjust the similarity scale. This can be really useful to remove corrupted frames or frames from other cameras that appear in the stream as an error. The demultiplexer automatically sorts camera views from a single stream, and after sorting all the views, these can be written out as separate single camera files. Lastly, we have motion detection. This can be very useful with large timescale video files. After selecting a region of interest, the filter will scan through and then pause when motion is detected in that region. The next category we have is interlace. Here there are four filters, 
that are all related to the interlacing on digital video and images that originate from an analogue source. Many consumer DVRs record at a field level, producing half-height footage. Line doubling resizes the image in height, with only one line in every two being interpolated, while the others will be kept at their original pixel values. Interleave is for use when a stored video file has its field separated. Manufacturers of DVRs do this in order to store interlaced data in a more economical way. The odd and the even fields are then encoded and stored individually in the same deinterleaved stream. Interleaving then puts them back together again, producing an interlaced video. Deinterlacing produces a progressive video from an interlaced one with a number of user-defined parameters to ensure that the process is completed correctly depending on your input data. The field shift allows for manual adjustments of the field's position in order to retain resolution on an interlaced frame. The first few filters under the edit category are crop, flip, rotate and resize and these are all quite self-explanatory with the resize having a number of parameter options for interpolation method. The next one, the Smart Resize, uses a different algorithm for resizing that can produce better results than normal resize methods under certain circumstances. Frame Size gives you layout functionality to position your image or video within a frame. Correct Perspective allows an object to be rescaled to ensure that it is parallel to the image plane. Aspect Ratio allows the entry of a desired output aspect ratio. This is to correct the scaling caused through the conversion between an analog signal and a digital file. Undistort allows the manual and automatic correction of distortions caused by a device's optics, whereas correct fisheye is specifically designed to remove distortion in fisheye lenses. Lastly, in this section, we have unroll. This converts an image that has been recorded in a specific cylindrical manner, quite often used in a number of 360 degree cameras, to a panoramic image. The channels category holds the filters concerned with the color channels in an image. Grayscale conversion takes a three channel RGB color image or video and produces a single channel grayscale image or video. Color conversion completes the opposite but we can't make our greys colourful again. The purpose of this filter is to ensure that you can apply colour to a grayscale image, such as a red circle or blue text. Without converting the image to colour first, any colour overlays would still be grey. Colour switch is a helpful little tool that switches the red and blue channels in an image. It's surprising how many exports or transcodes get the RGB values around the wrong way. So an RGB image gets transcoded to a BGR image, or vice versa. Color switch switches them back again. Extract channel outputs a grayscale image, but only using the desired channel. It not only works with the RGB channels, but also the Y, CB, CR, and hue and saturation. Enable channels, on the other hand, stays with the RGB channels and gives you the ability to turn each one on or off. Carrying on down, we have the Adjust category. The first five are quite common image processing functions. Contrast brightness, exposure, hue saturation value, curves, and then levels. The next one is Histogram Equalization. This is a very powerful adjustment filter that can be used for a few different purposes. Its main use is to automatically adjust the image values by distributing the pixel values more evenly across the available range. The Clahe, or Contrast Limited Histogram Equalization, works in a similar method, but this time adjusts the values in a specific block size independently of each other. This makes it much more suitable with images containing large contrast differences in certain areas. To end this section, we have Contrast Stretch that expands the pixel values across the whole available range. Let's take a break here 
and I'll continue running through the filters in part two. Bye for now.